Today we're going to take a look at the high grade Reconguscia in G, Gundam G Self Limited Blue Clear Version. Now this was released in 2014 as a limited release in Japan, a part of the new Gundam Simulcast campaign. Only 500 were actually made, so this is one of 500, which is actually pretty neat. Now this box is completely clear and void of any kind of illustration. It is just going to have the font and the lettering of Gundam G Self, and that's pretty much it. Now let's take a look at what's inside. Now the first thing in the box is actually gonna be this like information on shipping winning prizes. And it basically says like, thank you very much for applying uh, to the special gift campaign. You know, uh, inside is your reward of a Gundam G Self clear blue version. So this basically is like proof that you won this essentially. Next we do have the manual, which is not gonna be anything different. It's not gonna be anything outside the norm of what the regular atmospheric pack has. It's just essentially the same manual. Then we start getting to the runners, but first let's take it out of the packaging. Now take a look at runner A1. This is just beautiful. I honestly love this clear blue. And I know clear is just not a favorable thing for a lot of people when it comes to their Gundam kits. They just want it to be, you know, solid colors and a lot of times they want to paint it. But I really do love clear kits, especially these limited ones. I mean, this is a one of 500. That's this is gonna look so good on the collection shelf and it's really gonna just stand out even more. Runner A2 is just gonna be parts for the pack and then the shield. And part B is gonna be more parts for the pack as well as some parts for the main body, chest and everything. C is gonna have another shield and just more parts for the body. D is gonna be more parts for the body. And E is gonna be more for like the inner frame parts and you got like the hands. You're gonna have the main weapon right here. So it's really cool. Like pretty much every single thing is going to be in the same shade of clear blue. F is gonna be just more clear blue parts, some clear blue beam sabers, and the only non-clear parts in this kit is going to be the poly caps. We will have some stickers, but honestly, I'm probably not gonna use majority of these. I'll use like maybe the eyes and maybe the forehead, but for the most part, I'm gonna keep this thing 100% clear blue. But with that, let's go ahead and build. So take a look at details. It's kind of a little rough. Can't really like show you as well, um, you know, because it's all clear. But yeah, there are details. If you really want to paint a line and maybe a different color or something, or you really want to like do some kind of painting, you definitely can. It's the same armor as the regular release one. Uh, but unfortunately, you're really not going to be seeing much of details unless you put like the stickers in there. Uh, then you might be able to see a little bit. Actually, no. It's pretty much not seeing much of uh, any kind of details in this kit you can see when you're like really up close and when you shimmer it in the light like have the light reflecting it you can definitely see some details uh, but overall i mean on the shelf you're not going to be seeing much at all now for articulation look this is pretty much a 10 year old kit at this point the articulation is meh it's like very very mid to be honest it has some things that are just very standard the polycap neck it's going to have the you know basic articulation when it comes to that these elbows though are pretty ass. They are just, as far as I can do, 90 degrees. Unless there's something I'm doing wrong, but every time I try and push this forward, it's not actually going any further. So pretty much 90 degrees is all you get. And I thought that this actually went a little bit further. The waist is gonna go side to side and there is a ball joint in here, but it's just very loose. It doesn't really do anything to be honest. The hips are one of the worst. You can bring it up pretty much that far, but man, putting it anywhere else, that's the first you go into the back and then to the side, yeah, that's that's pretty much all you get. The knee joint is pretty bad as well. Now, at least the foot is going to be pretty okay. But in summary, this kit is really bad in articulation. And then you're gonna have a beam rifle that is, once again, all blue. So really nice, and you're gonna have a trigger hand because that's just what it originally came with. And next is going to be a shield. That's it, you get a shield. And next you're gonna have two beam sabers, but these don't actually store anywhere on the mobile suit, uh, even though in the story, it goes underneath the collar, but yeah, you're just gonna get these and you're gonna have to just put them somewhere else.
And then the last thing that this kit offers is going to be the atmospheric pack. This is actually a really cool backpack. One of my favorites uh, in terms of just like simplicity. I don't like all like the strike packs and like a lot of the crazy um, force impulse packs that exist. This is something that's very simplistic and that's why I like the L strike so much because it's a little bit more just to the point, you know, it's just for better maneuverability. It may come with a couple of armaments. This one has two missiles right underneath here, but for the most part, this is just used for, you know, better maneuverability. It actually does have a little bit of articulation. So here's gonna go up and down and then the wings, these can actually fold in. So yeah, it's like a pretty cool little neat feature about the atmospheric pack. Okay, so for my final thoughts, look, <laughs> the G-Self, as adored as it is, as much as I love it, I mean, I own five, actually I own six because of the Assault Pack, and seven if you count the Perfect Pack, so I own pretty much seven G-Selfs, and look, I really do love it. Even though it has so many problems with the kit itself, down from the details, the proportions, the articulation, the heavy sticker use. Honestly, I think it's still fine. You just need to put a little bit extra love and actually probably is not a little, it's actually gonna be a lot of love and effort into this kit to really make it stand out. But this particular kit doesn't really need that. All it really needs for you to do is probably clean up some nubs that are a little bit more exposed, which is easy with a glass file and just some really careful sanding. But it's a fine enough kit. This is a one in 500. Like that's ridiculous that I, I own possibly one of the rarest kits out there, especially one of the rarest kits for G Reco. What I recommend y'all to do is just figure out if you want to get this kit or not. It's ridiculously overpriced, I think. I haven't really been checking around in the American market, but for the Japanese market, I have seen it around for 25 to 3,000 yen range, which is pretty absurd. I think this came out at about like 1,500 yen. Uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty pricey. And hopefully with the 10th anniversary that is this year, we may see some reprints and hopefully much like we've seen with Gundam Age, they had like some very minor releases that are brand new, like the Farzia Dawn. And they also had the um, MG uh, Full Glanza set. Like those are really amazing when they did that for the 10th anniversary of Age. I would love just a full mechanics, give me an MG, something that's in the one to 100 scale for the G self. And honestly, I'll take anything from the G Reco like universe. But that's it for me guys. Thank you so much for watching. It's really ridiculous coming back to a standard review format. I, I'm really enjoying it and I think I'm gonna keep doing this at least for this year, see how it pans out and really try and do a little self identity and exactly where I wanna be three years from now. But that's it for me guys. Uh, thank you all for watching and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Bye bye.